I'm Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Opening February 2nd, 1927, with a book by Guy Bolton and Fred Thompson, music by Harry Tierney, and lyrics by Joseph McCarthy, Rio Rita was a lavish production chosen by Empresario Florian Ziegfeld to open his sumptuous brand new Ziegfeld Theater on Broadway. Rio Rita may be said to be one of the last great light musical comedies or follies types of musical, with the introduction of Showboat later that year, as well as subsequent George Gershwin musicals that year and throughout the early 30s, the American musical became much more a dramatically cohesive musical play, a form which reached its complete maturity in the Rodgers and Hammerstein years beginning with Oklahoma. Rio Rita is a fun, fast-paced musical comedy set in Texas and Mexico along the Rio Grande. In its plot, the Texas Rangers are on the lookout for a notorious bandit known only as the Kinkajou. The Rangers are led by Captain Jim Stewart, who is in love with Rita Ferguson, an Irish-American Mexican performer who sings in the local hotel professionally as... Rio Rita. The regional Mexican governor, General Esteban, also loves Rita and convinces her that Jim courts her only because he believes that the man the Rangers are looking for is her brother, Roberto. Complications, music, and comedy ensue on a grand scale that only Florin Ziegfeld could have delivered. Casting in the original Broadway production brought together two actors that would go on to become one of the most successful comedy teams of the era, when Burt Wheeler as Chick Bean and Robert Woolsey as Ed Lovett found immediate chemistry and would go on to a series of hilarious film comedies that rivaled the likes of the Marx Brothers, Laurel and Hardy, W.C. Fields, and the Ritz Brothers throughout the 1930s, until Woolsey's death in 1938. There was an interesting historical note to the show in that pilot Charles Lindbergh was attending Rio Rita on Broadway when he got news from the Weather Bureau that clear skies were opening over the Atlantic Ocean. Lindbergh then hurried to his hotel room but could not sleep, and instead rushed to the Roosevelt Airfield to take off on his famous flight to Paris in his plane, The Spirit of St. Louis. Starring today as the show's title character is the distinguished Mexican-American actress Maria Margarita Guadalupe Teresa Estela Bolado Castilla y O'Donnell, who was professionally known on stage and screen simply as Margot. As a niece to famous band leader Xavier Cugat, she performed with his orchestra from the age of nine as a specialty dancer in nightclubs and later on the starlight roof of the Hotel Waldorf Astoria in New York. Margot appeared on Broadway in productions by some of the top playwrights, including Paul Osborne, Sidney Kingsley, and Maxwell Anderson, as well as in numerous Hollywood films such as Winterset, Lost Horizon, Viva Zapata, and I'll Cry Tomorrow. In this radio adaptation, the role of General Esteban is played by legendary voice actor Alan Reed, who would go on to fame as the voice of Fred Flintstone, among others. We want to be sure to point out that his casting and stereotypical voice characterization here was common to the era of this broadcast and the kind of unacceptable approach we are well beyond by today's standards. Just a note that the top of this broadcast shows its age with a bit of crackle and hiss in the recording, but stick with it, it soon goes away. Here on the November 8th, 1948 episode of The Railroad Hour is Margot, Marion Hutton, Gordon McRae, comedy team Bob Sweeney and Hal March and Alan Reed with Alvia Ullman and Paul Fries in Rio Rita. Ladies and gentlemen, The Railroad Hour. From Hollywood, here comes the star-studded show train. (laughs) 
Tonight, your railroads, through the Association of American Railroads, present Rio Rita. In our star-studded cast, you will hear the host of our series, Gordon MacRae, and four famous guest stars, Margot, Marion Hutton, and Sweeney and March, with a great cast of Hollywood featured players, including Alan Reed, Elvia Allman, and Paul Freese. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Lubov, and the entire production is set to the music of Carmen Dragon's Orchestra and brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae, helping to bring you another in our series of musical successes. Tonight, the Railroad Hour Show Train presents a show that was originally produced on Broadway by the great Florenz Ziegfeld at the Ziegfeld Theater. So let's bring up the curtain on Rio Rita, with book by Guy Bolton and Fred Thompson, and lyrics and music by Joseph McCarthy and Harry Tierney. <laughs> In our performance this evening, I play the part of Jim Stewart, who falls in love with Rhea Rita, played for us by Margot. Marion Hutton is Dolly, a cabaret dancer. Hal March takes the part of the lawyer, Ed Lovett, and Bob Sweeney plays his client, Chick Bean. Well, in every show, there's a villain, and tonight, Mr. Alan Reed plays the part of a very bad hombre named General Esteban. General Romero Joselito Tomas Miguel Armando Esteban, if you don't mind, senor. And if I am, like you said, the bad hombre, maybe we have the more fun that way, eh? <laughs> anyway, you come with me to Mexico, eh? From Texas, we cross the Rio Grande and arrive pronto in the little town of San Luca, where I am head man, and where, for some strange reason... I own the Esteban Hotel, the Esteban Department Store, the Esteban Building, and the only floating nightclub in all Mexico, which is called <laughs> the Club Esteban. <laughs> it is getting dark pretty quick now, and I'm thinking of going into the Café Esteban for my supper, when down at the end of the avenue, Esteban, there comes a bunch of those Texas Rangers approaching on horses' backs. When you hold your own, you're not alone, for when you belong to the Lone Star They stop their horses in front of my hotel. One of the rangers, he gets off his horse and tags a piece of paper onto a pole. Then, without he says one word, he gets back onto his horse and they all ride off down the street, singing. Just like was in musical comedy. We're all pals together. I go over and read the paper, and when I am finished... I notice a very beautiful girl which stands by the hotel. Then, all of a sudden, a man steps out from the dark shadows. You know who that man is? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> so I grab her by the arms to keep her from making the scrams. Take your hands off of me, General Esteban. Take them off. Bastante, you are the spitfire, my Rita. I only wish to make conversation with you. Tell me, have you seen the notice the rangers just put up? No, what is it? It is a reward of $10,000 offered for the man who robbed the Texas State Bank of South Fremont last month. Do they know who it is? They only know he is the Kinkajou. I am not interested in the Kinkajou. See, see, you are only interested in this strange Americano. He's gringo. Gringo, gringo, all the time gringo. Do you not know that my father was a gringo see, too? See, 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 I know this. And I know also that you claim to be Americano. But that does not say you are half Spanish. <laughs> now tell me, what is the name of this gringo? It is none of your business. I know his name. It is Jim. What does he do here in San Luca? You know everything, so you must know that. No, that I do not know. But I am going to find out, and pretty quick. Me, General Romero, Joselito, Tomas Miguel, Armando Esteban, and the head of this district. 
And I do not like the stranger which is mysterious. And me, Rita Maria Dulcinea Maggie Ferguson, I do not like the people which do not like the people which I like. So, I go. Wait, not before I have the kiss. Eh? Come on. Let go of me. <laughs> Jim, Jim. No, no, he you. cannot hear you now. Jim. You're wrong, Butterball. Oh, now Jim. back up and play nice. Oh, Jim, Jim, Jim. You call me names, Zach Ringo? You make to me the insult, eh? Insult? But butter at 90 cents a pound? <laughs> so, so you are the smart Alex, eh? Okay, smart Alex, I'm going to tell you something. Get out of San Luca. Hasta la vista, senorita. Think it over, gringo. Oh, Jimmy, I am afraid of that man. He can do anything in San Luca. As long as he can't make you love him, that's all I care about. <laughs> oh, Jim... You know he cannot do that. Then don't worry. In a few days, I'll be through with the job that brought me down here, and then... And then you go back home? Only if you go with me. Oh, I want so much to see your so lovely house in Texas and your so lovely dog. And don't forget the so lovely river that runs along the foot of the garden. Is it nicer than the Rio Grande? Oh, no river is nicer than the Rio Grande. Do you know why? Yes, I know why. But I'd like to hear you tell me again. Down by the river Rio Grande, on its silver sand, that's where I found you. And now my heart's at your command, one to be near. The 
see my lovely Rita look at this gringo with the calf's eyes makes me very mad. So I walk away. And what do I see? Dolly Smith, a girl with dances for me in my cabaret, and a man named Chick Bean, which also works for me, driving up in an automobile which said, just married. I watch Dolly go upstairs in a hotel with bag, and I'm just about to go over and speak to Chick when that gringo lawyer, Ed Lovett, beat me to it. Hmm. Nice bundle of thread that just went upstairs, Chick. You know her? Slightly. She's my wife. <laughs> Your wife? When did you get married? Uh, about 15 minutes ago, and I'm still happy. Now, look, Chick, I'm your lawyer, and you had no business getting married without consulting me. This Mexican divorce of yours is no good. I received this letter from your first wife's lawyers. Read it and weep. Okay. What? Why, Ed, she, she calls me a bigamist. And she's right. Of all the fools, you are the bigamist. <laughs> Well, what, what, what's, what's the penalty for bigamy down here in Mexico? The same as it is in the United States. Two mothers-in-law. <laughs> well, what, what am I going to do, Ed? About five years in jail. Well, I'll, I'll never be able to do that long. Well, the law doesn't expect miracles, kid. Do as much as you can. <laughs> now, here's the situation. Until I can get the first Mrs. Bean to accept the divorce, you and the young lady you've just married must live as far apart as the poles. Well, do, 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 I, do I have to tell her now? Yes. Who well, wouldn't tomorrow morning do? No. Oh, Chick. Chick, darling. Now, here she comes now. Be sure to tell her the honeymoon's off. See you later. Uh, Chick, who was that? Uh, 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 Mr. Lovett, my lawyer. Uh, he's a fellow lodge member. Uh, 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 he wants me to go on a hunting trip with him. Hunting? When? Tonight. On your wedding night, you're not going to go hunting. Well, it would be original, wouldn't it? <laughs> Why, Chick Bean, how can you be so cruel? And on our wedding night. Oh, I want time to think things over. This is no time to think. <laughs> you're always in my arms, but only in my dreams. In dreams, you're always near. Sweetheart, we're always neath the palms, so happy than it seems, so near and yet so far apart. If I could only hold you, really tell you all my love, sin. Sincerely, how I adore your charms. You're always in my arms in dreams, but only in my dreams. I decide there is no use wasting my time on Dolly. So I go look, see what Rita is doing. And where do you think I find her, huh? In Jim's arms. You're always in my arms, but only in my dreams, in dreams you're always near, sweetheart. How I adore your charms. You're always in my arms In dreams But only in my Lachi is getting too deep for you, eh? <laughs> for me, too. Because later I hear Rita's brother, Roberto, talking with the lawyer, Senor Lovett. Senor Lovett, because my sister and I claim American citizenship, we have lost our rancho. I must leave here tonight, so I sold all our cattle. How much did you get? Two thousand American dollars. Can you change it into Mexican money for me? Well, let's see. A dollar is worth about four pesos. That makes eight thousand... Suppose I give you 5,000 pesos for it. But I lose money, senor. Well, a fella's got to live. <laughs> Take it or leave it. 
I take it. I hear you are. Keep it in a safe place, my boy. There are dishonest men in this town. <laughs> si. Gracias, senor. Gracias, Adios. yeah. Hmm. Not bad, not bad. Un momento, senor Lovett. Huh? Let me see that money. Okay, I stay back. Uh, I'll hold on to what you just look. Just like I think. Those dinero are from the state bank in Fremont, Texas. So it's from the state bank of... Hey! That's the bank the Kinkajou robbed. You, you don't think I'm the Kinkajou, do you, Esteban? Who cares? The Kinkajou big hero in San Luca. But be careful, senor. Do not let the rangers catch you with that money. Gosh. What am I going to do with this money? Uh, hey, Ed, can you change some Mexican pesos into American money for me? Chick, you're a very lucky man. It just so happens that I have about $2,000 with me. Oh, thanks, pal. Here are 10,000 pesos for it. Don't mention it, pal. The pleasure was all mine. Well, this money's going to have to last me a long time, boy. It will, pal. <laughs> about 15 years. <laughs> the Rangers. Well, let's scram out of here. I mean, oh, well, it's too late now. Here's the old song of the Rangers. What's going on here? Jim, what are you doing in a soldier's suit? I thought you were Rita's new sweetheart. But I'm also Captain Jim Stewart of the Texas Rangers. Oh. Whoa, what do you know? C can I buy you a drink? Thanks. Say, wait a minute. That money, where did you get it? Well, see you around, fellas. Hold that man. Well, what's the matter with this money? It was stolen by the Kinkajou. The Kinkajou? Well, hiya, Kinky. Oh. Ah, oh, no, no, you can't pin that on me. I just got it from Roberto Ferguson, Rita's brother. Rita's brother? Sure. Oh, then he must be the Kinkajou. Gosh, Jim, you can't arrest Rita's brother. Oh, yes, I can. Are you with me, boys? Yeah. When the rangers come to town to settle up or settle down, they're in their heyday. Because it's heyday. There's a bottle, laugh, a joke, a heck of a night, and then you're broke because tomorrow... We'll have tomorrow. We'll find this consolation when we haven't got a dime. Our job's a big vacation and a darn good time. We're all pals together. Comrades, birds of a feather. Shootin' pals, shootin' pals, shootin' pals, shootin' pals. In rain or sunshine, we... Stand for law here, that's what we're for here. And when we're about, you'll hear them shout, you better look out for the Lone Star Rangers, Texas way. We're all pals together, comrades, birds of a feather. And so the curtain falls on the first act of Rio Rita. The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment. Meanwhile, just a reminder that 30 years ago this week, this coming Thursday, the guns were quieted along the Western Front. No one who experienced it can forget that first Armistice Day. So this is a week for remembrance, for remembrance of those who brought us victory in 1918 and of the other men and women who in the Second World War once more fought to preserve the things that make America free. Many of these men and women were railroaders. Some of them, the 30-odd thousand men of the military railway service, were soldier railroaders in foreign lands. They ran during the war period the railroads in 19 different countries located on four of the five great continents of the earth. Others of these railroad men served with other elements of the transportation corps of the army and with the transport services of the Navy to provide the worldwide movement of men and material and supplies so essential to victory. Still other railroaders had no connection with transportation during the war. They were soldiers, sailors, airmen in the armed services of their country. Altogether, from the ranks of the railroads, there went into the armed services of the nation more than 350,000 men and women, 
an army in themselves. To them, and to the millions of other Americans who were in the service of the country in the two world wars, the nation owes the grateful remembrance of which this Armistice Week is a symbol. We return now to Rio Rita, starring Margot, Marion Hutton, Sweeney and March, and your host, Gordon McRae. Tonight, I am giving big party at my patio. I am working out big plans in my mind when Dolly comes out of the house with many of my guests. All laughing and having one swell of a good time. Ah, oh, good evening, General. I am glad to see you all enjoy my party. Where is Rita? You see her, Dolly? No, not since dinner time. Ah, there is the musicians. Let's waltz. Eh? Oh, now you can't waltz to that music. That's the kinkajou they're playing. The new dance they've named in honor of that bold, bad bandit. Yeah, how do you do it, Dolly? Well, the principle of the thing is, don't let your left hip know what your right hip is doing. <laughs> now you watch. Senor, when you do the kinkajou, you'll dance before you think you do. You clown around, you're feeling all oh so lazy, for you know you're shouting whoops a daisy. First you feel a kink or two, but here's the kick for you. Your one desire is to acquire each movement of this dainty dance twill thrill you through. Entrance you when you do the kinkajou. When you do the kinkajou, you dance before you think you do. You clown around, you're feeling oh so lazy, for you know you're shouting whoops a daisy. First you feel a kinkajou, but here's the kick for you. Your one desire is to acquire each movement of this dainty dance will thrill you through. Oh, I know it will entrench you when you do the kick the You are wonderful, my little darling. Come, give your old friend a kiss, eh? <laughs> Once more, the encore. Hey, 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 take it easy, General. Your good conduct medal is sticking me. Hey, just, just a minute, General Esteban. Don't forget, that's my wife. Why, Chick, I didn't think you remembered. Well, look, Dolly, I, I haven't told you the truth about us. Well, well, what do you mean? We're married, aren't we? Well, that, that's just it, honey. You heard about the secret society of the poison fang, haven't you? No, but I got a sneaking hunch I'm gonna. I'm, I'm an honorary member, baby, and honorary members aren't allowed to marry until they get permission from the head tiger. Oh, they're not, huh? Well, who is the head tiger? My lawyer, Ed Lovett. Well, then let me at him. Where is he? Looking for someone? Who are you? Your husband's lawyer, Ed Lovett. <gasps> so you're the... Hey! Hold that tiger! Hey! Hold that tiger! <laughs> tiger? What is this? Chick, have you been lying to this lovely girl? Haven't you told her yet that you have another wife? Another wife? You've got another wife, Chick Bean? Why, you, 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 Bluebeard, you! Oh, Dolly, that, that's just a five o'clock shadow. Don't you touch me, Chick Bean. I want to be a real wife, not a member of a syndicate. Goodbye! Dolly! Oh, you're not a lawyer, Ed. You, you're just a fight promoter. Now, now, Dolly's just as mad as Hops. Now, you've got to do something. I, I already have. I talked to your first wife, Katie, on the phone, and she's coming down here. Oh! her, not Katie. Haven't I got troubles enough? Oh, don't get all excited. She won't be here for two days. Oh, that's just dandy. Gosh, funny the fuss they make about a little wedding. Just a few words mumbled in the church, and you're married. Yeah, just a few words mumbled in your sleep, and you're divorced. <laughs> I get tired listening to these people argue, so when I see Rita coming into the other end of the patio, I hurry over to meet her. Where is Jim, General Esteban? You said in the note you sent me that Jim wishes to see me. I think perhaps he does wish to see you. 
But not here. I'm going. No, Rita, wait. I want to tell you something about your gringo friend. I do not wish to hear it. Get out of my way. General Esteban, I want to talk to you. Go ahead. A servant of yours entered my room and ransacked my bag. In this town, we do not bother with the search warrant when we deal with this suspicious character, Captain Stewart. Captain Stewart? See, si, my Rita, your friend. He is captain of the Texas Rangers. Jim, is this true? Yes, Rita. Listen, Captain Stewart, I have always prided myself that I am the good host. And since you are in my patio, I treat you like the guest. But if you do not leave in the five minutes... What will you do? I go to give the orders now to shoot you. Adios, senor. Go, Jim, please. I can't, Rita. I'm looking for someone. Who? I can't tell you yet. But remember, Rita, no matter what happens, I love you. Oh, no, you mustn't, Jim, please. There are too many people. You mustn't make love to me. Well, then, let's waltz. Waltz? Yes. That way I can at least hold you in my arms. Okay, let's waltz. If you're in love, you'll waltz. <laughs> to waltz is but a dream. For there's a simple charm that holds you arm in arm. A pair of smiles. It's so wonderful in your arms. I could waltz forever. Not forever, Rita. Remember, you promised someday that... Yes. Someday I'm going to be your wife. Oh, let me hold you closer, Rita. Uh-huh. Back onto the patio, I see Rita in Jim's arms again. But uh, I am very cool when I say, uh, Rita, I cannot see you made the fool of by a gringo. How did he make the fool of me? This gringo. He is after your brother. I do not believe it. Ask him. Jim, is it true? Yes, Rita, your brother is the kinkajou. The kinkajou? Oh, now I know you make the silly jokes. He make the love to you, my Rita, so it can help him to get your brother. You lie. I prove it to you. Captain Stewart, if you wish to catch the kinkajou, you better make the hurry, because he is getting ready to run away. Where is he? At his ranch. Jim. I'm sorry, Rita. Jim! Why did I told you, Let eh? go of me. Wait, Rita. Do you love him more than your brother? No, no, I hate him. But I must keep him from taking Roberto. Do not make me worry, my Rita. Roberto is safe. Where is he? Inside, in my private office. Oh. And Jim will never bother you again. My soldados will take care of him. Soldados! Sí, Shoot the gringo who is just leaving. Sí, no, no, no. Get out of their way, Rita. No, no. Fire, soldados, fire! I, I will not let you. I will not let you. Rita! You do love him. You forced the guns up so they couldn't shoot straight. Jim! Jim! Oh, you have killed him! Jim! Oh, oh thank heaven.
Before we bring you the last act of Rio Rita, I'd like to point out that the 30 years since the armistice of November 11th, 1918, which brought to an end the hostilities of the First World War, have seen amazing developments in every department of life. And in no field have there been more new developments or greater progress than in the field of transportation. This is true of transportation on the highways, on the water, in the air, and on the rails. Between the end of the First World War and the beginning of the Second, the railroads of the United States spent an average of $500 million a year on the improvement of their plant and facilities. Much of the improvement was undramatic, straightening out curves, cutting down grades, putting in better signals or communications, improving shop machinery and practices, as well as building and buying new and better engines and cars. But when the great test of the Second World War came, these undramatic improvements, made and continued year after year, paid off for the nation. For despite all the other developments, and even after all the billions of public funds which had been spent on other ways of transportation. When emergency came, it was to its railroads that the nation turned. It was the railroads which carried 90% of the war freight and 97% of the organized military travel. And nothing has happened since the war which in any way diminishes the importance, indeed the absolute necessity, of maintaining in full force and vigor these railroads which in time of peace are essential to commerce and in time of war are vital to victory. The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. Hi, this is Porchlight Audience Services Manager August Compton. Thank you for listening to WPMT. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and hope you enjoy the show. Now back to Rio Rita, starring Margot, Marion Hutton, Sweeney and March, and your host, Gordon McRae. A couple of days they go by and I see no sign of Captain Jim Stewart. Meanwhile, I keep Roberto out of sight at the Club Esteban, which is the floating nightclub I own on the Rio Grande. By this time, I am so sick of the women that when I see a gringo dame coming up the gangplank, I make the quick duck. So when she speaks to the lawyer, the senor Ed Lovett, I am happy. Because she is not so good looking anyways. Uh, pardon me. I'm looking for a gentleman by the name of Lovett. They told me at the hotel that he was here at the Club Esteban. Madam, you have the honor to be speaking to that broad-shouldered, irresistible chap right now. Oh, oh really? Uh, well, I'm Mrs. Bean. Oh, you're the first Mrs. Bean. In other words, you're the has-been. <laughs> Mr. Lovett, I am not going to let Chick put anything over on me. Now, Mrs. Bean, I suggest that you make arrangements to collect alimony from Chick and then go back home. I don't want alimony, Mr. Lovett. My uncle just died and left me three million dollars. Yeah. What? How much? In the neighborhood of three million. That's my favorite neighborhood. <laughs> Step right into my office. Tell me, my dear girl, why do you waste your time on a jerk like Chick B? Don't you know how beautiful you are? <laughs> Don't you know you have charm? <laughs> three million charms? <laughs> Listen, Sugar, just what advice did your lawyer give you before you came down here? He told me to say no to everything. Sounds like a very wise man, baby. Do you mind if I put my arm around your waist? No. <laughs> baby, you and I are going to have a lot of fun. If you're on the level about this. Do you mind if I... Oh, Chicky, dear. Who's here? Ed Lovett and some woman. Yeah, isn't she a frump? <laughs> what? Oh, good gosh, it's my wife. What? I, I, I mean, my ex-wife. Uh, hello, Katie, how are you? Uh, this is Dolly. Uh, 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 my future, meet my past. <laughs> well, my dear, you certainly know a good thing when somebody else has it. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Do you want him back? No, you can have him. 
Oh, thank you, Katie. He's nothing but an insignificant little runt. <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. He may be a runt, but he's not insignificant. Oh, thank you, Dolly. Mrs. Bean, there's something I want to ask you. <laughs> yes? How would you like to see your name on my tombstone? Oh, will you take good care of me? And how? <laughs> you don't realize how valuable you are to me. Oh, am I really, Ed? Oh, you certainly are. And it isn't the three million I'm thinking about either. I'd love you if you only had two million. <laughs> Not as much, but very nearly. Oh, what's that? They're firing at somebody. Look, it's Jim Stewart. He's headed this way. Rita, where's Rita? I've got to see her. Okay, Jim, we'll find her for you. Dolly, you wait here. Oh, you're crazy, Jim, to risk your neck like this. Well, that's the way it is, Dolly, when you fall in love. Why don't you practice my philosophy? Well, what is it? Well, when things look darkest for me, I just keep singing. I'll spend my days chasing after sunshine. Someday one ray may steal. Can't change my ways Always hoping sometime Someone else may learn to care as I do There's only one beneath the sun That I've ever found If he would smile on me a while Would change things all around Until then I'll spend my days Chasing after sunshine Following the sun around I think you've got something there, Dolly. Well, now you try it yourself and see how much better you feel. I'll spend my days chasing after sunshine. Someday one ray may steal through. Can't change my ways, always hoping sometime. Someone else may learn to care as I do. There's only one beneath the sun that I've ever found. If she would smile on me a while, it would change things all around. Until then. to that song waiting for Rita to show up and sure enough she does. I have them all trapped now. So I begin to carry out my plans while they talk. Jim, oh Jim. Rita, Rita darling. Jim, General Esteban has many soldiers here tonight. They will kill you. You must go quickly. Not till you tell me you love me. I love you, Jim. And Dallas, place your man at the gangway. Oh Jim, he knows you're here. They will catch you. You cannot get away. I'm not licked yet, darling. And I've got an idea. Look, try and keep Esteban busy for a couple of minutes. I'll be right back. Rita, have you seen the gringo? One of my men tell me they see him come aboard this barge. Then why you do not ask your man where he is? Because I am asking you. Oh, you're hurting Tell me, me, have you seen him? Tell me. Take your hands off my sister, Esteban. Take them off. <laughs> you dare to take the pokes at me? <laughs> Lopez, shoot this Roberto. He is the Kikaju. That is not so, Esteban. It is so. If I say it is so, it is so. <laughs> shoot him, Lopez. Hold it, hold it. You can't shoot that man. Ah, 
Why, the gringo. He shows himself. Shoot him too, Lopez. I'd recall that order if I were you, Esteban. You are telling me what to do. I am the head man of this district. I do what I please. You're not the head man of this district, General. You're in Texas now. Texas? That's right. I cut the cables and this barge has drifted across the river. We're in Texas. He is right. This is Texas, and here come the Rangers. Don't try to get away, Roberto. You're under arrest. So it was for this you came back. Oh, I despise you. I hate you more than ever. Rita, let me explain. Do not speak to me. Not now. Forever. Esteban. What do you want, gringo? I want you, General Esteban. You're under arrest. Arrest me? You make the talk like the crazy one. Mm, I don't think the judge will think I'm crazy, Esteban. When I show him the proof that you are the kinkajou... Kinkajou? Jim, is this true? Yes, Rita. Esteban is the kinkajou. I had to pretend that I thought it was your brother in order to get the proof against him. Arrest him, men. But... You cannot do this to me. No! No, it cannot be did. Not to me, General Romero Joselito. What? Well, maybe it can. Come, men. Take him away. We're all pals Well, anyways, I get a nice horseback ride out of it. But I have fun. I fool you, eh, all the time? You do not guess it was me who was the king of you, eh? <laughs> oh, you did, eh? Okay. Well, they will not hold me long, because the courthouse where they take me is named Esteban Courthouse, and I am very familiar with the judge who is my cousin, Pablo Esteban, Jr. And maybe I still win Rita, too, because... You know who rides with me by my side, out of Rita's reach? Listen. Oh, Rita, Senorita, good boy, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is Gordon McRae giving a special vote of thanks to our four guest stars this evening, Margot, Marion Hutton, and Sweeney and March, and to the other members of tonight's cast for their fine performance in our production of Rio Rito, which was adapted for radio by Ed Gardner. Well, next week, our star-studded show train will arrive on the same tracks and at the same time. On board will be Dorothy Kirsten, Lucille Norman, and Francis X. Bushman to join me in bringing you Rudolph Frimmel's famous Vagabond King. With our chorus under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. So, until next week, goodbye. And remember, during the coming week, as always, the American Railroads will provide for you the dependable, low-cost transportation which is so essential to the American way of living. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. Rio Rita came to movie screens in 1929, starring B.B. Daniels in her first talkie and John Bowles, along with Burt Wheeler and Robert Woolsey, following their triumph in the original Broadway production. The film was the biggest and most expensive production for RKO Radio Pictures at the time, with the last portion of the movie photographed in Technicolor. Once again, Rio Rita proved to be a huge success and was chosen as one of the ten best films of 1929 by Film Daily. Wheeler and Woolsey were the only principals from the stage version to appear in the film. Based on the success of the movie, the comedians were given contracts to star in a series of comedies for RKO Radio Pictures. The film launched B.B. Daniels and John Bowles into stardom, and both of them starred in a number of musicals in the years following. 
They proved to be so popular with audiences of the day that they were both hired by RCA Victor to make a number of phonograph records. The 1929 film version of Rio Rita is a faithful rendering of the stage show and was one of the few films personally supervised by legendary showman Florin Ziegfeld, and it's very likely that the film gives an accurate impression of what a Ziegfeld stage presentation of that time was like. In 1942, Rio Rita was remade for the screen, starring another hugely popular comedy duo, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, featuring Catherine Grayson and John Carroll, and this time with Nazis stepping into the revised World War II era story, it was during filming of Rio Rita that Abbott and Costello had their hand and footprints enshrined at Grauman's Chinese Theater on the night of December 8, 1941, the day after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Today's comedy stars, Bob Sweeney and Hal March, were both San Francisco natives who began appearing together in local Los Angeles radio programs in the mid-40s and won favorable reviews in the press. It's no surprise they were asked to appear in Rio Rita as their comedy routines resembled a slightly toned-down version of Abbott and Costello. Sweeney and March were first teamed on the new Hoagie Carmichael show, providing a sketch per episode. CBS gave them their own show in 1946, playing down-and-out radio comics, who shared the smallest office at the CBS studios. The program lasted until late 1948 and was revived as a quarter-hour daily program on ABC in 1951. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. Michael Weber